Hello, welcome to Stuart One I See. Time for another project video. This will be a part one, I believe, and I'm doing this now because I'm really excited to, to uh, dive into this, but for prosperity, I want to just film the little opening before I get into this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna show any footage of me doing time-lapse of the restoration. I think I'll probably just give you updates on the stages. Now, those of you that view the channel would know that my videos come as and when, and the most video, uh, recent video you should have seen is the flight video of my winter and spring project, which was the Airworld ME262 twin 90mm EDF. If you haven't seen it already, check out the video feeds or the link below and you'll see it there. Uh, I mentioned that because of projects now. It's summertime and like the Magnetilla that I did before, and that was in the summer also, this is my next summer project, I think. It's a restoration again and it's a Flare SE5A. Now, those of you that know me know that I'm a fan of the Flare models. They're British kits and they've been around for donkey's years. I've had many of them. I've got the Puppeteer, I've got the Fokker DV7, and I had Magnetilla, of course. You can see the parts uh, restoration video on that in the channel feed as well. But this one, the story with this one, well, first of all, you can see I've already started you know, stripping back and it's not great looking. I can definitely say it's in worse condition than the Magnetilla was when I received it. That being said, I think it's really rather well built. It's just had some rather poor uh, decisions made on the finishing of it but I'm gonna get into that in a little while but the story of this I brought this in the UK maybe about five years ago for I think 50 pounds some local guy was selling it on Facebook I think it was his grandfather's it's been stored up in the in the roof or the attic for or a loft if you like in the UK uh, for a long long time um, it's seen better days for sure but I'm hopefully gonna restore it to its former glory anyway so I'm getting on to this this is the yeah flare SE5A. For those of you who don't know, it's around 1300 mil span, which I think is around 54 inches. This one comes with a beautiful um, Sato 45 Special, and I'll take that engine cowl off in just a minute to show you more of that. Um, I think it's well built. I do think it's well built, but like I said, it's been poorly finished, and this is going to be the tricky area. Um, it's almost like it's two models. If you look, well, I'll turn it around if I can. One second, keep the same, keep the camera rolling. Okay, here we go. So it, it's almost like it's a cut and shut, it's almost like it's two models, because the front portion is, I don't know, the, the covering was really difficult to get off and it's got quite a bit of filler in there and glue, and it's very, very much oil soaked. Whereas the rear part here, there's a very nice clean uh, cut, if you like. And the way the, the, way the guy uh, covered this, and it makes me think, Make, makes me think it was repaired. He re uh, covered it in sections. So he did this section, owed it to there, and then the half, uh, the rear half, which is a very strange way of covering it. It's the same way on the wing. Instead of doing the whole uh, top panel, he's done sections like this and with different colored solar text. Now looking provisionally, uh, I see no damage. And this is typically what you'd find if a model's been repaired. And you can see it again on the bottom uh, wing as well. So I find that a little strange. I never got the full story from the guy I brought it from because he didn't know RC, it was just his grandfather's and he's, it, he died and it had been in the law for years, he was clearing out. So it's a bit of mystery, but I'm gonna dig into it and have a look. I've got some ideas on what I wanna do. I think principally, I, well I've already tried. You remember the technique I showed you with the space walker? I'll cut to some footage now of it, where you could heat up the uh, you know, residual covering that's left on the wood, scrape it off uh, with a knife and a heat gun. I've already tried that and that's not really working here. So let me get some better light on it, there we go. That's not really working here. This is really baked on and scraping it off just damages the wood. And actually the underside is a really real horror story. If I get under there, this is really, really oil soaked here and gummy. Um, and it's got all this horrible filler and whatever. So I think what I'm going to do, actually, if we zoom out here, is replace this, this all this here is a balsa, and then above that is birch ply. So actually I think probably from this line here, I'm gonna replace all of that section with fresh balsa. Also, the other thing, I have the plan for this. I've got a copy of the plan. Excuse me, so that should be quite easy to do. Now, uh, going on to the front, the cowl itself, if I can get a shot of that there. 
This and the plan, well, and, the, and the later version of the kit was uh, an ABS molded section. In the earlier version it was carved out of balsa and plywood and whatnot. I think what I'm going to do is actually remove that and have the cow removable. If I can't restore this, then I'll 3D scan this, and this is my idea. I'll get a 3D printed um, cow that I can then screw on and I can paint to match the, uh, the covering. So that's some ideas I've got initially going through it. Uh, that might change when I start you know, really getting into it and stripping it all down, and that is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take out the engine, all the electronics, and uh, see what we're really dealing with here. Put aside, or make a little project box for it, and then get going on it. Now, I wanted to show you the, uh, the cow. Just give me a second. I wanted to show you the cow, and I'm gonna show you that. I wanna apologize also, I've been talking under my breath a little bit. It's about nine o'clock at night here, and uh, the kids are asleep, so I'm trying to keep the volume down. Anyway, this is, there it is the laser, no not laser, sorry, Sato 75 Special, special because it says so, custom made exhaust which is a little bit uh, loose so I need to fix that, the engine will be completely stripped, uh, bearings replaced, it still turns over but uh, it will have a full service uh, done on it and I've already got the parts, now this here, this old round tank is how I know this is the original uh, version of the kit from I think the 80s, uh, so this kit this model is easily as old as me and interestingly this was the first uh, scout kit that I tried to build uh, about 25 years ago that's uh, how old I am and how old this is so uh, it's got a little special place in my heart I've never actually owned one to fly I've only ever owned one to restore or as a partial partially made kit so I'm very excited for this and uh, it should be very very good fun uh, there's the old Albert pilot that will come out and be replaced with a 3d printed one the Control surfaces will probably need to be rebuilt. I have to see because they're probably crushed. But again, I have the plan for it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's about it. I uh, will come back with more once I've done more. So I'll see you then. Okay, so it's the next morning and everything's been pretty much removed from the fuselage. These are all the, the old crap. And uh, I say old because it is old. These Ripmax green packs are extremely old, probably at least 25 or 30 years old. Obviously that's dead. The servos on their own, they're, they're good enough standard servos, but you can see there's been some um, corrosion on the screws. That gives you an idea of how long they've been there. They all go in the bin and some other bits and pieces that will be chucked away. And this is the Sato 45 Special. It's uh, a little dirty, but it still turns over. So that should uh, break down and clean up nicely. And the little pilot will be replaced. It's called an Albert. That's what they called it. That will be replaced by a 3D printed version. Still keep the gun and the little uh, Atos tube, I think it is. It's the uh, aiming tube. Um, and if you look at the fuselage, oh, there it all is. All stripped down. This will be cleared out with uh, brake cleaning. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, brake. Uh, Brake cleaning fluid, I think it is. It's a spray can. It's designed for cleaning brakes. It's very good for removing old uh, grease. All of this wood's all good. The front cow has been removed. This plate will be replaced. I'll cut a new one. All the sides here, as I said before, don't think this can really be saved. So I'm just going, and it's quite fuel soaked. So I'm going to remove all of this portion up to here. And that will all get new bolster in there. And if we turn it over, you can see that the plywood at the bottom is just as fuel soaked and all gummy so that can't really be saved that's again going to be cut out and replaced inside it looks uh, yeah, really good it's nice and it's old but it's dry and if we have a quick look at the rear fuse line you can see that it's, it's all nice and clean all of those joints will be uh, gone over with CA just to make sure they're nice and strong and um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So unlike the videos before where I gave time lapse and stuff, I didn't really have time for that and I want to move on with this quickly. So I'm just going to come back to you maybe in the next part now where I've done some progress on this and we can see how it's going. Okay, so a little bit of progress um, update for you. It's a few weeks later now, I'm still in this first part of the video and um, had a little change of uh, direction with this uh, 
conversion, not conversion. It is a conversion now, but restoration. Of course, here it is, the SE5A. Now, uh, first things first, this is the Sato 45 Special that was removed. There it is, special, because it says special. Um, and when looking at the wood around this area uh, and the condition of it, I felt that it wasn't really up to the task of being restored to run a dirty vibration prone nitro engine, which is a shame because it's a beautiful engine, but I'll find something else to put that in. I've got uh, bearings and um, washers and gaskets and stuff to, to rebuild that nicely. Uh, not that it you know, is in bad condition, but uh, I should probably change the bearings anyway. So anyway, the point is I have gone with electric power um, because as I said, the, knowing the, the age of the airframe, I think it's at least probably 20 or 30 years old, knowing how long it sat there with the fuel just really, really soaking into the wood and how dirty and gummy and sticky that wood was, um, I felt that it wasn't really up to another round with a nitro engine. So it's gonna go electric and it'll last much longer for it. So what did I do so far, what I've done, I stripped back all the wood. I cut the bearers down, the engine bearers, because my engine mount, or sorry, my motor mount now, follows those same um, bearers. So that means I can put that on and get the exact same thrust angle. So I'll give you an example of how that slots in like that. So that slots in probably about there. And now that side thrust and down thrust is exactly right. A three or 4S, I'm not decided yet, four to 5,000 milliamp hour will fit in there nicely. I had to cut out where the fuel tank was. That's the bay, I've got screws on there so that can be removed as needed. And this is, if I pull it out again, this is a motor from a Avios uh, extra 330 it's a 600 kV motor so that should be just about right for this and if I turn it to the side this if you remember was really quite disgusting all that wood uh, uh, plywood sorry balsa wood has been cut away at 330 second sheet that was all cut away um, this is the original part and that was all cut away the uh, birch ply decking was much much dirtier than this this has been sanded and scraped and cleaned back uh, you know a lot and it's much much better than it than it was this will probably have a a, a little bit of um, adhesive put on it so the uh, covering sticks better but this is the 332 sheet that will then go on like so and then that will all be really much uh, easier to cover and the the covering will have uh, something nice and clean to adhere to if I turn it over we will see this is the original plate that was on it you can see this is what the, the majority of the wood was like in this condition. Pretty much all oil and residue soaked, uh, brittle and weak and flexible and no good for gluing or reusing. So I've replaced that. I cut a new one. There's the new one. That's where the speed controller is. 50 amp I'll probably use on this. And I will now make this a screw on plate. So that goes on like, like so. Now on the top of that, or on the front of that, if you remember looking back at earlier in the video, this is the original uh, Cal, he made it all by hand and it was really really nicely done so I wanted to reuse this. This has been stripped and sanded as much as possible. I've cut out all the all the grills there apart from these ones here which is where the screws will go in and it will bolt or sorry screw onto the front there as you can see something like like so. So it's all been stripped back. This will now be uh, have a little bit of filler and then it will be covered in polyurethane and give it a nice smooth hard finish and then that will be sprayed directly to match the, uh, the spray that's going to go on the covering. Um, I decided to use the original push rods. I think they seem pretty much good and we'll keep this quick and simple. Uh, next is to get onto the tail plane once I've reskinned the side of the fuselage. So. That's about it for this part. Once uh, I've got the skin on the side, and then I'll move on to the tower, as I said, and then I think there's not a great deal of work. I'll need to remove the tower completely. I do have a plan for it if I need to rebuild it. And then after that, I'll move on to the wings, and that should be a pretty straightforward affair because they really just need recovering. Maybe I'll put dual servos in them as well. So that will be the next part of the video coming up. Well, in, in terms of edit, right now. Wait a second. One more bit I forgot to cover. I was talking about replacing uh, wood like I did with the, uh, the cover there. Uh, also where the wing sits in here, I had to uh, replace the, uh, the wing post, uh, what do you call that? Wing post holes and the front um, mounting block for the 
the undercarriage. This is where the engine is or would have been and this is where all the residue would have been and again as you can see if I can get a good shot of that completely oil soaked um, and saturated and not really useful for anything. So that was all replaced too but if I turn it around and get a better glimpse you can see that that's going to be up to the job for years to come. Right now on to the next part. Hello welcome back and here we have some progress. There we go. So as you can see, it's uh, in rather a different state and for the better actually now. It's all ready for covering. Now, turn the camera. Hello. As we uh, talk now, it's been about, well, probably about four, four weeks or so since uh, the last clip that we just cut from. Since then, uh, I've been very busy with work. I've actually been out in Hong Kong and in China. Things are uh, definitely uh, taking a turn for the better there in, in regards to Hobby King, so look out for some good news coming on that soon. But uh, that was very productive, very nice to go back into China. But what it meant was that uh, I didn't have much time for the SE5A. However, it's the weekend now, family's still away for summer vacation in Finland. So I really want to crack on with this and I have been rather busy. So let's talk through um, what's, what's progressed. Remember before the rear was still covered, that's all been stripped down now, all rehinged. I've added some additional stringers there. This is all ready for covering, no real damage there. So pretty pleased with that. I will use the original push rods. Then I moved on to the wings and uh, let's have a look. Um, First of all, it's now got uh, direct drive servos on each uh, aileron, whereas it was just one servo with a bell crank before. Now, if you remember, I spoke about the wing before and I said, well, it looked like it had some, some damage, and indeed it had been, uh, had been damaged. Um, the guy, previous, uh, the previous owner had definitely repaired here and, and here. So I think those whole wings have been broken off at some point. Um, you can see he's put some reinforcing in here. So what that meant is I had to do a lot of filling, a lot of sanding, and if we get a better look there, there we go. Uh, quite a lot of filler there. There you go, this is where he's done some reinforcing there. It's a little crude, but it works. So I'm gonna leave it as is, and the wing is certainly very strong now. Um, so that's all been sanded and filled, and it all fits and finishes very, very nicely. Uh, I've actually still got the, this is the original pilot. Remember I said I was gonna 3D print this guy? Well, actually, I kinda like the idea that I will keep the original one. He has been cleaned up. Uh, he needs a little bit of touch up of paint, but it's kinda nice to think that the, the pilot that was in it before will be in it again. These are the guns that have, uh, they've just been dry fitted on. Now, this was the, if you remember, the, uh, what do we call it? The engine cow, the engine cover. I managed to salvage that and um, I've laminated it with some fresh wood and that's all been primed ready for spray. Uh, this is the, the bottom hatch, again primed ready for spray and of course now that it's electric you need a hatch so I've got a uh, magnetic hatch here and the electric motor setup you already saw before, that bolts in there, battery goes in there and uh, it's going to be very easy to attach the cow like so ready for flying. The exhausts have now been cut off and uh, they'll be screwed on there so it'll be essentially like that so the rear part will stay on whilst the front cow is removable. Um, so that was the that's the most part, part and the next uh, well the final big task was for me the undercarriage. I'm going to turn it over and give you a different shot of the undercarriage. Now with the undercarriage uh, I was hoping that all of the, um, the covering would protect the wood underneath that but that wasn't the case, that wood was uh, fuel soaked as well. So that, as you can see, has been completely replaced and I've spent the good part of uh, this weekend just uh, adding the, the new balsa fairings and uh, carving them and getting them looking really, really good, as you can see from that footage there. So that's pretty much it. Now, um, I'm at the stage where, well, there's nothing left to do but to cover it. Uh, I am gonna varnish the undercarriage much like I have the struts, these are the original struts and I've varnished those up. So the uh, the undercarriage is gonna get a varnish look like that. And um, I can just rest that back on there, there we go. And yeah, it's uh, 
it's ready for covering. So that about concludes this, I think it'll be two parts of this SE5A video. This is the end of the first part now. Like I said, I've been very busy with work, good things coming there. Um, and in fact, the next video I'm gonna do is somewhat related to work, so uh, look out for that. Um, but yeah, the next part of the video will be covering and then flying. Probably I won't show the covering, I'll probably just uh, see you guys at the field for the flight. Uh, I'm going to paint the uh, roundels on something I haven't done before, so that's going to be a bit of an experiment. Anyway, that's the progress, that's the SE5A, and thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Stuart Warner RC. And of course, please like, comment, and subscribe if you wish to. And I do really appreciate the comments, they're really nice to see. Okay, so I hope this inspires you guys to get out and restoring, because it's quite a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun and very, very rewarding. I love seeing these old, old airframes get a new lease of life. So tune in for the next one where we should see this one flying.